They stepped out of the captain's quarters and into another hallway. The hallway stretched out in front of Junpei for a bit before turning left like a great pack went out. Alright, let's go. Junpei ran the corner and took off down the straightaway. So this is the part where Clover killed us all, but now that she knows Snake is still alive, she's not going to do that, right? He ran and ran and ran. The end of the hallway was a That's door. The next door. He made straight for Wait, a piece of paper. Yeah, this was the map, right? This is Get to the halt. Map. Finds a map. <laughs> then he realizes uh I found a map for the Um I yeah. see. Well that And we was... realize that Clover's not here, right? Hey. So he turns around Damn to find it. Clover. And he stopped around the corner, he saw her. She was standing in front of the door to the captain's quarters, her hand on the doorknob. Clover! Huh? As Jimpy watched, she closed it gently and quietly. <sighs> All the dots. <sighs> Even more dots. What the hell are you doing? Nothing. Oh, come on. Please don't lie after all what we've been through. What do you mean, nothing? Her pockets are still bulging. Overhead unconsciously put her hands over the pockets of her jacket as if trying to hide something. What the hell is that? What? You've got something in your pocket. What is it? Oh, this? Uh, um, this is... a note. A note? Yeah, I found it in the pocket of the guy with the captain's clothes. Oh, that's new. It said something about the darkness of the sinister hand or something. What the hell? Uh, let me see it. Uh, no, not right... But Junpei wasn't going to get to see it. From the other end of the hall, he heard Ace's voice. Hey, Junpei, Clover, what are you two doing? Hurry up. He's getting mad. Clover shrugged. I'll show it to you later, all right? Come on, we gotta hurry. Before Junpei could protest, she was gone. Around the corner and off down the long stem of the owl. Uh. All the dots. A note? A note. Junpei was curious. But there was something else that bothered him. From the look of that pocket, it doesn't particularly look like just a note. Jeez, what are you thinking? <sighs> For crying out loud. Junpei did his best to convince himself that it would make sense later, and ran out to Clover. <laughs> Junpei pushed past the door and found himself in a large room with a large set of stairs. The big stairs. Huh. So this is where it ends up, just like it says on the map. It was just what he expected to see after reading the map. His I see after reading the map himself meant that Ace had probably said the same thing. Ace, did he head down? He put his hand on the handrail and leaned over to look down. Oh, there he is. Look, the four others are there too. And not just Ace, Santa, June, Seven, and Lotus were there as really? well. Let's join them. Junpei and Glover glanced at each other and hurried down the stairs. They reached B-Deck at the same time. Jumpy! Clover! Hi, June! June's face was excited. Something had happened. That much Junpei could tell by simply looking at her. What's up? Given the situation, he was not inclined to be excited about sudden developments. June, however, couldn't contain herself. We found it! Found what? We found it! What did you find? The last door! We found door 9! What? Come on! Just follow us! We'll explain on the way! Okay. Seven turned and jogged down the stairs. Well, if that's the case... Wait for me. We should get going as well. The rest followed. Jumpy! We finally made it! The relief and excitement in voice echoed what each one of them felt. Yeah, it's finally time. Junpei wasn't quite ready to believe they'd really done it. At least not just yet. Still, if everyone said that was door 9, then it probably was. We reached the end. He could feel his heart racing. A mixture of anticipation and fear ran through his veins. And he could feel his legs shaking. He was doing his best to maintain a sense of healthy skepticism, but he couldn't deny that the prospect of escape was an exciting one. Something's bothering me. Only three to five people can go through the numbered door. Seven of us are on our way to door 9. That means that, best case scenario, there will be two of us who have to stay behind. Two people? Is there a way? Jinpei looked over at the clock. 4.30. We've only got 90 minutes left. 
I've got no time to wonder about it now. Hey, Junpei! Jun! What the hell are you two doing? Hurry it up! Santa's voice jolted Junpei out of his reverie air. Still can't Let's say the go, word. Jumpy. June took on out the stairs, turning as quickly yeah. as she could. Junpei followed. So last time, Clover got us, or got a bunch of people to go to door two because she wanted to kill off uh, Santa and Seven. As a group, they piled into the elevator and rode impatiently down to Edek. It looked familiar. There was a metal grate between the two elevators. Seven got a hold of it and began to talk. I know I told you I'd explain it earlier, but honestly, there ain't much to explain. After we split off from you guys, the four of us got into the elevator on the left, and that took us to the other side of the grate. After that, we headed down another hallway. It took us toward the bow, and eventually to the number six that you two found earlier. We opened it and kept going. There was another locked door behind it, like usual, but this time we had to complete two different areas before we could unlock it. Once we were through that door, there was another hallway that went the other direction, toward the stern. So, on your way, you found the elevator. That's right. So, in other words, you kind of did a lap, huh? You came from that side to this side. Yeah. But that's how Jinpei looked around. So, where's the number nine door? Over here. Follow me. Seven began walking down the hallway that led toward the stern. <sighs> All the dots. Jinpei and the others broke into a jog to keep up with him. By the way... They had been walking for a while. June in silent step with Jinpei when she spoke. You know... It's because of Santa that we're all here right now. Huh? That all seven of us are going to door nine. How is that? What? All the dots. You don't get it? Santa, seven, and Lotus, what's their digital route? Uh, six, seven, eight. Um, eight plus six is 14, 21, three. I can't do math. Uh, no, um, I'm sorry. I did 6 plus 7 plus 8. I can't do math. Uh, I just didn't realize that that was Santa. 3, 7, 8 is 18, plus, which is 1 plus 8 plus 9. 9. It's 9. That's right. They could have just left me behind and kept going if they'd wanted to. Oh, I see what you're saying. But they didn't. Yes, because Santa wouldn't let them. Oh. Now that's interesting. He said we can't leave June and the others behind. That's why we went looking for you guys. And then you got on the elevator and went back to the central staircase. That's right. Hmm. Hmm. Well, uh, I wouldn't have called that one. Uh, that Santa would be the one to stick up for you. I mean. Jinpei felt his eyes knit as he considered that. Oh, don't get me wrong. Perhaps June has sensed Jinpei's concern. I don't mean that Seven and Lotus said they wanted to leave me behind. We were just talking about it, and Santa objected to it first. Is that so? Jinpei was about to respond when... Seven suddenly stopped. We're here. In front of them stood a door. So, is this... Yeah. Jinpei couldn't see Seven's face, but he could see him nod. There's no other place for us to go. Nope. Just look around. There's a big old iron wall at the end of the hallway. The other hallways on the left and right are blocked by metal grates. I see. It looked as though Seven was right. The door in front of them was the only choice. All right, let's get moving. He pulled open the door and walked in. <sighs> All the dots. Jinpei took a deep breath and followed. <sighs> All the dots. They feel like they've been telling the truth. No way. First thing Jinpei saw as he entered the room was the number. Nine. Like all the others, it was a rough thing, made of rough paint, red paint. The door decorated sat on the back wall of a rectangular room. <laughs> all the dots. Junpei ran up to it. The nine door. It was a large double door with powerful styling. Something about it was almost majestic, and it made the red paint look especially garish. We're finally here! Junpei grabbed the handle and shook. It didn't budge, but then again, he didn't really expect it to. The red was bolted to the wall next to the door. It displayed red, vacant. No doubt about it. This is door nine. 
Oh, finally! This is the last. Junpei felt a flood of emotion wash over him. He felt a chill down his back, and his chest tightened even as his blood began to boil. There was a moment of complete silence. Junpei, look behind you. He turned around. Behind? What? Junpei could scarcely believe what he saw. Why? A door and a nine. There's another one? Hey, what the hell? What the hell is going on here? His words came out slowly and his brain struggled to understand what he'd seen. On shaky legs, he made his way to the second nine. It was a small door, so parallel to the door they come through, but in the other corner of the room. Nine. There was no mistake in that number. And if any more proof was needed, a red was bolted to the wall near the door. There's a red there too! That means- And of course it won't open. He grabbed the handle and shook the door. Not because he expected to open, but because he had to make sure it was real. But why? Why the hell are there two doors? It was Ace who spoke first. Do you think perhaps one is the right door and the other is the wrong one? Lotus was skeptical. I don't know about that. It seems unlikely. What makes you say so? Well, think about all the rooms we've been through so far. They're full of puzzles, but there are always hints about how to solve them. I'm pretty sure there aren't any rooms where we just had to go with our best guess and leave it to instinct to solve the puzzle. True that. Do you really think that at the very end of the game, Zero's going to suddenly throw in something that depends entirely on luck? Then you're saying there's some sort of hint in this room? No. I don't think there's a hint anywhere in here. I searched it very well when I was in here before. I didn't find anything that might have been a hint, though. Hmm. Well then, that means... Yeah, both of these are the right door. I mean, if you think about it. Zero never actually said there was only one door with a nine on it. It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that carries a nine. Yeah, he doesn't say seek the only door or seek one door. He says seek a door. Junpei began to mutter to himself. So if there are two number nine doors, if we split it up right? That's not gonna work. Junpei blinked and looked up at Clover. She held out her hand. You've got a notebook and a pen, right? Can I borrow them? Sure. Yeah, here. Slightly confused, he pulled them out and handed them to her. Look at this. Clover opened the notebook to a blank page and sat down on the desk. Everyone else gathered around her and watched her as she wrote down a series of numbers. You get it? Um. Basically, what you're saying is every single combination does not result in two possible ways to go? The numbers on the top are all the combinations with digital roots of nine. The numbers on the bottom are the people who don't fit. There's only eight possibilities if we split up into two groups of three or four people. So... If three people go through the door, then four are left behind. If four go through, then three are left behind. Right? Well, that stinks. Yeah. Clover nodded. Almost as if she were pleased with herself. For solving a difficult math problem. Yeah, so if you look, um, all the 16s... If we had the number 2 to any of those 16s, we would have 18, which is Dojo 9. Um, but because we don't have Snake here... No way. <laughs> all the dots. <sighs> even more dots. Hmm. Yeah, and even more dots. <sighs> and an infinite amount of dots. The room went very quiet. Silence lay across everyone like a thick, heavy blanket. No one spoke. The faces were blank. Come to think of it. Desperate for someone else to look at, Junpei turned his eyes to the room around him. What is this room? The walls were covered with candles. The wavering flame made the shadows of Junpei and his companions look as though they were dancing. Two rows of wooden pews filled most of the room. It looks like it's set up for some kind of ceremony, but what kind? Between them was a strip of rich red carpet. The carpet ran straight through the room, ending at the door that pointed to the stern of the boat. 
at the other end of the carpet. Is that an altar? There was a recessed space set into the wall between the two other doors. Looks like a coffin, and there's some sort of digital pad on the coffin? Sitting on a raised section of the altar was a coffin. A coffin. Coffin. A coffin? No, it, it couldn't possibly be. But if it wasn't, then whose body occupied it? All the dots. That was as far as Junpei wanted to pursue that line of thought. He decided not to think about the coffin. For the time being. That moment, Seven spoke. There was an edge of humor to his voice, but it was forced. Okay, I give up. I give up. I figured if we sat around here long enough, someone would volunteer. But I guess nobody's got the guts to do it. What are you talking about? Jinpei didn't understand, and he wasn't the only one. Is he going to say that he's going to sacrifice himself a lot like Ace did? What? You guys didn't figure it out yet? <sighs> fine, fine. Let me enlighten you. Because 16 minus 9 is 9. I'm sorry. 16 minus 7 is 9, which means if 7 sat out, the other 3 could go through. Clover was mostly right with her little explanation earlier, but she missed something. She wasn't really wrong, she just... Ah, screw it! Let me just write it out. 7 snatched up the notebook and just began to write in it. Everyone else clustered around him, desperate for a look. If you're trying to leave with a group of three and a group of four and get everybody out, Clover's right. But there's another way. Only one combination, though. If you split us up into groups of three, three, and one, you can make this combination. Mm -hmm. Wait, this means... Don't get me wrong here. I'm not trying to copy Ace or anything like that. Even if he hadn't been the hero back in the big hospital room, I'd still be saying the same thing. The same thing? Are you saying... Yeah. I I'll stay behind. Oh. Uh... All the Why are you marks. acting so heroic all of a sudden? Are you some kind of idiot? Lotus was the first to speak. That in itself was a little strange. She'd reacted much differently when Ace had volunteered. No, I am completely against this. I'll be goddamned if I'm gonna have to owe you for getting out of here. The rest of them began to speak all at once. I'm against it too. I didn't want to leave Ace behind, and I don't want to leave you either. I don't like that idea. There's got to be other options. I disagree as well. I can't say I care much for you being the hero. Finally, they quieted down. Jinpei looked at Seven. Well, there you go, Seven. Proposal denied. Clover's right. There's got to be a better way than this. Seven made some noise that was somewhere between a derisive snort and a cough. Hmm. Doesn't make any sense. He was doing his best to pretend like they were making a foolish decision, but Jim Craig could see the twinkling of water at the corner of Seven's eyes. That was when Santa spoke. Whoa, hold on a minute. I haven't said anything yet. Until then, Jim Craig hadn't realized that Santa had stayed quiet for the whole discussion of Seven's fate. Something in his voice made Jim Craig very uncomfortable. Are you... agreeing? You want to leave him here? Santa shook his head. Nah, I'm against it. I don't want to leave Seven here alone. Then I don't see how it matters. He just said alone. I said alone. Oh. Huh? I said I don't want to leave Seven alone. There was a dull shine in Santa's eyes. They were cold and hard. Junpei felt himself shiver. What the hell are you... What? You don't get it? I can't leave just one person. I need two more. Three people, including Seven. I'll be leaving behind three people. I don't get it. That's my proposal. No, those are my orders. Huh? What do you mean, orders? What the hell makes you think you can order us around? Who the hell's gonna listen to you? You all will. In three seconds, you won't have a choice. Why? What? Three, two, one. Huh? Santa was so fast, Jim Pei could barely see him. When he moved, it was almost like watching a dance. His feet moving like lightning. He spun and... Ah! Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! Yeah, June. See? I told you. His lips cool curled into a cruel and mocking smile. Santa, are you really zero? Huh? What? 
He's got that gun from that other room. A shudder traveled the length of Junpei's spine. His chest froze and he could feel his breath go stale in his lungs. Nothing made sense. Junpei felt as though his head were about to explode. Santa suddenly changed in attitude, saying that he needed two more. The gun in his right hand, a revolver. Santa had grabbed Jun from behind and pressed what Junpei's shaken brain identified as a revolver roughly against her temple. Why? What the hell is that? What on earth had Santa possibly found a gun? Junpei's questions roared in his mind, but his mouth refused to ask them. Seven smoke, almost as though he had sensed Junpei's confusion. The gun's from the other room. What room? One of the rooms behind door six. I should have known he was going to do this. I should have taken the gun. <laughs> well, it's too late now, fat ass. Damn it. A mixture of fury and frustration twisted Seven's face, and he glared at Santa. Santa, for his part, did so much as flinch. The corner of his lip twitched into a slightly wider smile. <laughs> All the dots. Then the smile faded and he began to move. He walked backward, dragging June with him. Before long, his back was resting against the door. On the wall next to him was the red. He put his hand on the scanner panel quickly and then forced June to do the same. But that's only two and that's nine. Now, time for you to start following my orders. You would need another nine. That doesn't exist here. Ace, Lotus, congratulations. I've chosen you to come with me. Never mind. Put your hands in the red. That's what he meant by he needed two of them. Yeah, it's 18. That's what Santa had meant when he said he needed two more. Yeah, hey, got it. Hey, you deaf? I gave you an order. You son of a... Santa's eyes narrowed to slits. He glared at Ace and Lotus. <laughs> All the dots. <sighs> All the dots. They stayed frozen like deer caught in the headlights of an oncoming car. Right. Fine. I didn't want to waste any bullets, but... You guys just don't get it. No sooner were the words out of Sam's mouth than his hand twitched. <gasps> God. <laughs> no. Gun ward. Oh, God. Oh. Dude, I just thought he blew June's brains out. I, I literally almost lost it. Uh, a section of the floor exploded, scattering wooden splinters across the floor. A thin plume of smoke snaked out of the hole in the floor. <laughs> there could be no doubt that the gun was real and it worked. He really shot it? But why? Santa, why are you... Bora's voice spoke of betrayal and disbelief. Santa, I thought... I thought you were one of us. I thought we were friends. What? You knew about the leaf words and the four-leaf clover. Santa's cheek twitched, almost imperceptibly. What the hell is that shit? I've got no idea. You're lying! Shut up! Just shut up! You stupid bitch! You want me to put a bullet in your fucking head? God, what, what changed over him? Flecks of spit flew from Santa's mouth, his face twisted with rage. Clover recoiled, her eyes wide. When she spoke, her voice was very small. Santa! He snorted, then shook his head vigorously and turned to face Ace and Lotus. All right, assholes. What are you still standing there for? Get over here and scan those bracelets. I don't have all day. Oh, what's the matter? Your hearing's starting to go? Going senile, maybe? Uh. <sighs> Ace and Lotus still didn't move. It almost seemed as if they couldn't move. June's face was pale behind Santa's arm. <gasps> her eyes were wild and her chest heaved with every quick breath, like an animal cornered by a predator. <gasps> Junpei's mind worked fiercely. What were they going to do? All the dots. Then he realized something. There was nothing they need to do. There was nothing to debate. That's it. June's safety was the first priority. That much was obvious. Doing as Santa had commanded meant she would be safe from at least two threats. She wouldn't be shot, and she would leave the ship alive, along with Santa, Ace, and Lotus. There was only one thing for Jupe to do. It's the only way. He turned to Ace and Lotus. Please, go. Huh? 
No way. Jumpy, what are you saying? If you stay here, you're going to be stuck, Jumpy. And so will Clover and Seven. I know, but you don't need to worry about us. We'll figure something out, right, Seven? Uh, right. You just leave it to us. It's gonna piss me off to do what Santa says, but... Don't worry about me, either. There's still something I have to take care of. No, no! You can't! Ace, Lotus, don't come over! Don't worry about me! Please! Jin was almost crying. <laughs> All the dots. Jinpei walked around Ace and Lotus. He gently placed a hand on each of their shoulders. Please. And pushed them toward the door. Uh. All <sighs> the dots. They almost stumbled, then righted themselves and took another step. And another. <sighs> All the dots. They turned around and Jinpei nodded. Go. Oh, Alright. Fine. Ace and Lotus turned around again and walked slowly toward the door where Santa was waiting for them. After what seemed like an eternity, they stopped in front of the door, marked nine. Santa smiled. All right, now let's get those hands on the scanner panel. <sighs> All the dots. <sighs> All the dots. What's the hold up? What? You think I'm fucking around here? I don't give a shit about this girl. The red doesn't need a person, you know? All I need is the bracelet. You get it? Good. Now put your fucking hands on the scanner. I'm not gonna say it again. He shoved the revolver harder against June's head, and she winced. Fine. He sighed, defeated, and placed his hand on the scanner panel. Lotus went next. <sighs> Lotus glared at Santa and slammed her hand into the scanner panel. The fourth asterisk blinked on. Good job. Now, Lotus, pull that lever. Soon as the door opens, you get your ass in there. Try anything stupid, and you know what happens, right? Damn it. Jinpei could almost hear Lotus's teeth grind. The door slid open. Door number nine opened at last. It opened with a low, powerful rumble, a drum roll to welcome the chosen few. Good, go. Lotus and Ace walked through the door, their eyes furious but defeated. Santa waited until they were all the way inside, then they hauled himself and June across the threshold as well. Later. Six seven eight. After exactly nine seconds, the door swung shut. A gust of air created caused the candles on the altar to flicker and die. <sighs> All the thoughts. The room fell silent. Jinpei, Clover, and Seven had been left behind. <sighs> All the thoughts. Clover looked down at her hand and traced her with her face. A finger of the faint blue veins that crisscrossed them. <sighs> All the dots. Seven showed his arms into the front of his overalls and stretched his stomach. No one spoke. Silence made the air feel thick and oppressive. <sighs> All the dots. Desperate for something, anything to occupy his mind, Jinpei walked to the larger of the two nine doors. He stood in front of it and looked at the red. It read, engaged. <sighs> Even more dots. He moved to the smaller door. The red read, vacant. God. The digital root of the remaining people was seven. Five plus four plus seven equals 16. 16 is one plus six, which is seven. It was, no possible way for them to open a door with nine on it. Junpei touched the surface of the door. June. He thought about June. About Akane Kurashiki. Was she safe? That was all that mattered to him. If she was alive? If she had escaped this horrible boat? <laughs> all the dots. That's what Junpei prayed for. Seven came up next to him. He pulled off his hat. Scratched his head 
inside. So, what do you want to do, Junpei? What do you mean, what do I want to do? What can we do? Seven opened his mouth to respond when... What the... Uh, hello? A noise echoed through the room. Someone was pounding on something, vigorously. It wasn't mechanical. Certainly human. Junpei and Seven looked at one another. What the hell is that? Uh, you tell me. Shh, quiet! Clover mentioned to Seven to be quiet. She put one finger to her lips and closed her eyes in concentration. What the heck? Who is knocking? The three of them listened, trying to determine where the sound was coming from. Where is it coming from? Is it coming from door nine? Could it be? No way. Uh, hey, I think it's coming from this coffin. No way. You're right. Let's open it. But how? What are those muscles for, for show? You're telling me to force it open? Just shut up and try! Junpei 7 grabbed hold of the coffin. They tried to get a good grip with what little purchase they could find, and pulled with all of their strength. Damn it! It won't even budge. There was some sort of keypad attached to the coffin. Its purpose would not have been difficult to determine. The eyes are almost immediately drawn to it. Not another one? Yeah, looks like it. Do you think we have to put in the right password or it won't open? Well, what's the password? I think so. The noise wasn't stopping. In fact, it was getting louder. Whoever or whatever's inside this thing wants out. And now. I know that. But how? <sighs> Without a passcode, I, I don't think there's much we can do. They couldn't even tell how many numbers the passcode need to be. Isn't there a hint somewhere? Well, let's look for one. Unfortunately, there didn't seem to be anything near the coffin. Clover ran to examine the pews and Seven to investigate the desk, but they turned up nothing. <sighs> There's nothing here! Not making this easy, are they? The sound still wouldn't stop. It wasn't a noise that belonged in that room. <sighs> All the dots. Ah, it's so freaky. What's the passcode? What the heck is in that coffin? What am I supposed to do? How can we figure it out? I need something. Whoa. What? What? How, how can it be to be continued? What the heck is going on? Game? Fortunately, that's the wrong answer. I'm Santa. Now it is time. Let our game begin. What is going on? What just happened? Would you like to save the game info you obtained during this playthrough? Yeah, yeah, I do, and... What just happened? Uh... Uh... Okay, this is interesting because... That's a yellow lock. So we unlock the white lock. But now we have a yellow lock. So does that mean that this... There's something more here? Or is this the second game? I'm so confused. Um, I mean, we do have the second game ready to go. And we do have the third game ready to go because for some reason I bought them as a trilogy like a year ago and never played them. Uh, but what is going on here? Um, uh, so I guess what we should do is go down this path because that's our only other answer, right? I mean, our only other possibility is to see what's down this way. And the only way to see what's down this way is to fill in all these red locks. Uh, sort of like we did with the white locks. Um, I'm completely confused and more confused than I was when we started playing. Ah, man, this, 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 this just never ends. Uh, my name is Afutless Burr. This is your story-based gaming channel, and we're playing 
999, blind, in this let's play that keeps throwing us through loops. Uh, we shall see what happens next time. Um, until then, uh, yeah, until then, um, I'll see you tomorrow with another video. This time going down the red path to see if we can open this coffin somehow. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you would like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more. Also, please do not forget, you matter, you are brilliant, and you are loved. And you should always remember to be true to yourself. Don't let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly feathered flightless bird. Till next time.